Hi, uh, my name is Darwin Man. Uh, I've been a YouTuber for a while. It's one of the first times I've actually put myself in front of the camera. Usually it's my animals. But there's just some thoughts uh, that I want to kind of get out with this introductory video. and I uh, hope I can maintain and do uh, a few more, um, if not at least responses to other videos I've watched. But I watched a lot of the, the videos that were put forth by uh, Thunderfoot. Aaron Ra, Don Extus, and uh, I just think they just really do a good service. I think they really try to clear up a lot of that misconception and really try to ed educate people um, about you know what what science is, what have we found out, you know, what evolution is, um, and and what design and you know, intelligent design is and isn't. And that's kind of the focus of this particular little video. Mine's more about like. The thoughts on, on particular arguments. I've noticed, even back when I was a lot younger, uh, before I became an atheist myself, and uh, or just shortly after I became an atheist, that when I've tried to debate some of the more uh, metaphysical concepts, of, you know, or, or the, the concepts of, of deities, you know, the omnipresent, omnibenevolent, uh, omniscient, and, and those contradictions, and, and how they just don't always quite work. Uh, one particular woman that I always would debate about it seemed like, you know, I'd get closer to where she was in her argument. You know, I'd ask her to define the terms that she's using, and then when I would, you know, make some ground in kind of counter arguing those, and, and in fact showing where her logic, you know, went wrong or where there was a hole in her argument, she would change the argument. And I kind of unlikened, you know, or kind of liked or likened that to you know playing chess and as every time you move a piece your opponent just changes the setup of the board around and in that case you're just never going to to win um, but it just seems like when any time you try to dispel or clear up a misconception it just either they just kind of ignore you or um, they almost a sense to a form of reverse ecology. You know, they go, you know, they jump on you about saying, well, that's what you're doing. And in fact, it's what they're doing. Um, this one kid I was debating about, um, who he's religious and, and he kind of jumps at me for being non religious, for being an atheist. And, you know, his big thing is, well, you know, you're just going to feel really stupid if you get up at the pearly gates and, you know, notice that your name's not on the list. And, you know, and we're debating about even about the Bible, but. You know, he'll get on to something, and we'll be starting to talk about like evolution, and he kind of thinks that there's some kind of in de in intelligent design behind it. But he'll jump and say like, "Well, you know, with the Big Bang, you know, um, I just can't believe nothing. You know, something came out of nothing." And I tried to explain to him that that was not the case. That you know, the Big Bang actually is a more than likely was a singularity, and that's not nothing, that's a whole lot of something just compacted down to something really, really small. Um, and he just kind of just mulled over it. He didn't even, you know, stop to go, oh, well, okay. You know, he's just like, well, just no, I can't believe that nothing came out of something, or something came out of nothing. It's just like, that's not it. Um, or like even another kid, um, you know, said, well, if evolution happened, why is there, you know, why is there still apes? And I'm like, it's because it's a misconception. Evolution doesn't have this preconceived idea. It, you know, runs with what it gets, and, you know, whatever works, and whatever animal or species can find a niche, then, you know, it's going to exploit that. Um, and it just, when you try to explain this, they just really kind of ignore you. And I just, I mean, it doesn't help with trying to clear the misconception. Um, and I think half the time it doesn't seem like it's even when it's, that threatening. I mean, me trying to clarify the concept of the Big Bang really didn't threaten this guy's personal belief system, and uh, it really didn't, you know, change his argument. I mean, um, it actually supported it. You know, he could still maintain that he couldn't believe that nothing, or that something could come from nothing. And this was actually supporting it. He just didn't want to listen to that. And he's, you know, really an intelligent guy, and. Uh, it just made me think about all the other people I've ever, you know, kind of argued with or debated with, and it just seems like they have this unconscious, you know, I don't know, 
involuntary knee-jerk reaction to kind of change the argument around um, so that they don't lose. It doesn't quite work with debates. I mean, if I got into a debate with someone about you know, the existence of Bigfoot and, uh, you know, shot holes through all of their, you know, so-called proof, and they came up with one piece of evidence that I couldn't, that scientists couldn't, that, you know, said, hey, look, this actually might be something to it, then I would have to, you know, accept that. And that's proof. I'm not talking about the belief here. And, uh, I don't know, it just... Uh, and then, again, another misconception is the, you know, word or the term believe. You know, I had another lady that I used to work with say that, no, I don't believe in evolution. I don't believe in it either. I accept it as a current scientific theory. Um, belief is something personal. Um, it can be supported or not supported by evidence. And, uh, it's kind of like what Penn and Teller said about, you know, religion. If you believe on faith that your Bible is, in fact, the Word of God, we can't touch you. I agree with that. And i like to add that, personally, I wouldn't want to touch you. That's your personal belief. That's something that I don't have a right to touch. But when you say that, oh, I believe in this because, or that the Bible is historically accurate, or, you know, or someone else said that, you know, there's more evidence for the existence of Jesus than Alexander the Great, well, then that takes it out of that realm of faith and puts it back into that realm of, of at least inquiry, you know, be it scientific or, you know, at least within a logical, you know, a symbolic, logical argument. And uh, you're going to have to put some, you know, support behind those comments. You know, I wouldn't expect you guys to say, oh, I saw a pig fly the other day, and believe me, just because I said it, I, you know, I'm going to show you pictures of the pig with the wings and, you know, DNA samples of why this pig had wings and all this stuff. And, you know, replicate it in other controlled you know, environments to make sure there wasn't, like, fires or, you know, a gust of wind or, you know, someone with a you know, remote-controlled, you know, pig with wings. You know, I put forth that, you know, adequate evidence. And I guess that's just kind of the point here. Uh, I'm kind of rambling, so I think I'm going to go ahead and close this. Uh, hopefully I'll uh, do some more of uh, these videos and get over my uh, nervousness with the camera. So, thank you.